Holly said jokingly when we were doing the Plug Talk interview that we were her dream double team. Mm. I think there are a fair amount of women who wouldn't mind the the 22 Danny Mullen double team. If you wanted to do that on Plug Talk, I would be happy to do it. I feel like I could get hard and perform with a lot of crazy going on i yeah. feel like if i was in a refugee camp that i could get hard to perform <laughs> if somebody busted out a camera you on the other hand i'm not 100 percent sure i've seen i've seen guys who f for a living unable to perform because they're in the same room as another guy and that i, I would hate to see that happen to you uh, if you and i had a, a show where we basically did sledge lords like we had the headsets on the headset mics and we had a drink in our hand which i'm not sure if that's legal in but if we were drinking and podcasting while we were double teaming a chick, that might break the industry. One time a girl showed up to Plug Talk with a Truly. That's not that strange. She, but she had it like on the set, like while we're doing the interview, she's like sipping the Truly. Is that not allowed? Well, I feel like that might be illegal. It's just kind of weird because it's like, you know, she was totally coherent, but also it's her drinking alcohol. Yeah. So you just like you 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 probably want to have like a cup or something. Because sure. If the girl's gonna look drunk at all, like it's totally normal to have a couple of drinks before you have sex. But if you're gonna look drunk on camera, yeah. I feel like that is all bad. That's like you definitely don't want to like even get close to that line. Yeah, that's like bondage. Well, it's crossing the lines of legality, maybe. But bondage isn't crossing the line of legality, is it? Bondage can be. I think it's illegal. I think if a girl is truly tied up, you're not allowed to have sex with her when she's tied up. You have to untie her. Well, I think like in the bondage community, I'm not sure about the legality of it, but in the bondage community, for sure, they have like an agreement about exactly like the terms of the consent and stuff. Because, yeah, if you're fully tied up and then you decide that you don't want to do this and you can't stop them from doing it yeah. god that could get tricky real quick i wanted to ask you about the uh the felony situation sure break this down for our slightly less uh regime adjacent uh viewers who not don't guilty know, baby who don't know about what you did not guilty so you went somewhere to tennessee tennessee can i take a wee wee before we talk about this do it tennessee tennessee so yeah, it's it's been we haven't recorded a sludge lord since I got arrested in Tennessee. Right. I we were filming a documentary out there basically on like big food and big soda exploiting poor people. Mm. In the way that like Coca-Cola and Hostess cupcakes are marketed exclusively to people in poverty. Mountain Dew has basically been crop dusted into Appalachia <laughs> since like the 1930s. Right. So we were doing something on that. And the way we were going to cover that in a funny, unique, Danny Mullen-esque way is we went to a free pop-up dental clinic for basically impoverished hillbillies who can't afford a dentist. Uh -huh. And we went in there and were, like, pretending we were dental hygienists. Right. Amateur dental hygienists. We pretended we were dental hygienist enthusiasts. Right. And we get there, and, like, the really the, the bit was super innocent— like, it, it, what we were being very polite to everybody. Everybody was laughing. They invited us in. Nothing really even usable happened that I would be like, yes, I'm psyched on this footage. This is going to be great on video. But a couple of the people at the clinic were very displeased we were there, and they called the police. Mm. Now, we just flew across the country, drove deep into the wilderness of eastern Tennessee. This is the very first shoot, the very first morning of what's going to be a four-day shoot. And the cops roll up. And on why us. did you end up at this particular dentist's office in this remote area? Because we wanted somewhere deep in Appalachia, and this was the only one we could find. And I just love the fact that you're used to doing content in LA. And as far as YouTube content goes, as far as getting the police to do anything, the standard in LA is about as high as it gets. You've got to really fuck up in order for the cops to take notice because they are just demotivated, understaffed, uh, and just really, unless it's a murder, mm -hmm. unless you have a brick of cocaine strapped to your waist or a bomb or something, then they pretty much are not going to show up or do anything. And then you go and you do this like relatively harmless skit that I feel like if you went to every dentist's office in Hollywood and tried to do this, this uh, act, you probably wouldn't ever even run into the cops i would just do the starbucks across the street one of the baristas made a beautiful four latte frappuccino tray that was clearly destined destined for some film shoot or some tech powwow um a homeless guy in cargo shorts and non-matching shoes walked in lifted it up and walked out the door just stole probably 
thirty-five dollars worth of Starbucks. So you, the you, barista, took one look, <laughs> didn't even say a word, and began remaking the order. Shut the fuck up! Really? No thought of calling the police for the reasons that you just laid out. Wow. In L.A., if you called the police, they would basically laugh in your face if you were like, hey, you know, they just, a guy just came in here and stole a bunch of merchandise. And I feel like in most Starbucks throughout the world, if there were to be this like high priced drink that came up missing, that the the Starbucks staff, when they saw this discrepancy in what was sold that day, that they would assume that it was just one of the employees who had helped themselves to a drink because how else would someone get it? I don't feel like any of the Starbucks I go to on a normal basis that you would ever see someone stealing from that sort of end zone there where they let everybody get their drink. But welcome to Hollywood. Yeah. Happens on a regular basis, I'm assuming. It constantly. Wow. So, so you're so right. And I go to jail because they look through. The cops were actually, like, very polite. The cop was all in favor. He knew that what we were doing. So they charged me with a felony. Uh -huh. And the reason they charged me with a felony is they were throwing the book at me. They were prosecuting me as if I had set up a, a real dental clinic, represented myself as a dentist, and was performing bogus root canals for profit. Uh -huh. That's how they prosecuted me. Like I was actually harming people and making money from it, not an asshole YouTuber from L.A. Wow. But, of course, being an asshole YouTuber from L.A. probably even made it worse. The cop was in favor of dropping it. He wanted to drop it to a misdemeanor in court. Uh -huh. It was just, I, I think it might have been one of the DAs who just hated me. But they took me to jail over it. The cop just kind of shrugged his shoulders. I was like, I'm sorry. It says it's a felony. We got to. They took me to jail. And that jail... That was my first time ever being in anything other than, like, a drunk tank. Mm. And, Adam, for for once, it kind of, like, made me sympathize with all these people out here blowing the trumpet of criminal reform. Mm. And, you know, because I've always been pretty pro-law and order. Like, I, I couldn't relate to the George Floyd riots and the people who were like, fuck the police, ACAB. I didn't get that at all. White. What's that? You're white. Yeah, basically I'm white. <laughs> That would have saved me a lot of breath right there. <laughs> right. But once I was in that jail cell for about a day and just seeing those terrible conditions, like I kind of like have sympathy now for the people who are just they're born into poor circumstances and ignorance leads them down a road that it winds them up in jail. I'm pretty sure that the Appalachia, the Appalachia region is where have you ever seen I think it's the most viewed video on the soft white underbelly YouTube channel and it's basically like a house full of like inbred handicapped people the Whitakers yes the Whitakers yes and, and they're they're like barking like dogs yes and there's a lot of like hee, 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 yes like just weird high-pitched noises and shit and like you've never really seen people like this I'm pretty sure that they are the result of like intense multi-generational inbreeding yes which is fine which is great honestly yes. um and that was the, I, I imagine there were probably some people who fit that sort of description behind bars with you or was it not that intense that's the good news i've seen that whitaker's video yeah and though the people are deeply deeply inbred they're all very friendly uh. and jovial toward the host that was the case in jail, too. I walked in there. First of all, one of the guys recognizes me from YouTube and is a huge fan. So I'm basically in with my pod of 30 guys right off the bat, which I really needed because I was scared when I saw they were going to release me into general pop. Mm. But it's probably better that I got arrested in eastern Tennessee and got thrown into jail versus L.A. because there it was all... Jolly meth heads yeah. who, per who basically weren't guilty of violent crimes and they just wanted to get released so they could go score another bag of crystal. Right. And um, yeah, they kind of reminded me of the Whitakers. I can't confirm or deny that any of them were inbred, uh -huh. but um, yeah, same sort of vibe. It's interesting because I don't feel like just being a meth head is the type of thing that's going to really get you behind bars out here. The meth heads are allowed to run wild. You have to commit some pretty nasty crimes yeah. while you're being a meth head. Dude, that's what I was thinking about is we keep – California, we obviously have this massive homelessness crisis. I forget. We have like 60 percent of the nation's homelessness. Well, no shit. Like the incentives to be homeless in California – all year round, you can sleep on the beach without a blanket and pretty much be fine. Mm. You can walk up to a police cruiser, take a deep hit of a meth pipe in his face and blow the cloud into the open car window, mm. and he'll probably just write you a ticket. 
how harshly do you judge somebody for smoking meth? Because there was a guest that I had on the podcast recently, and I have no idea if it's true, but there was a lot of comments accusing him of smoking meth. And I don't really know how to feel about that because on one hand, let's say that I knew that you were, you know, doing coke on a regular basis. I mean, I would be a little bit worried for you on a friendship level, but it's not like I would like write you out of my life just because you're doing coke. And I wonder, like, is meth that serious? It's definitely a step further than coke. Like culturally, I feel like it occupies a certain place in our mind. Yeah. But it's, I, I wouldn't judge, judge somebody harshly if I found out that Donnie over here, if I found out he was on Adderall on a daily basis, I would be like, whatever. Like, that's, Donnie, that's cool. However you get through the day. Stop popping Addy and looking up gay porn, Donnie. You really <laughs> need to chill over there. I, it's whether I mean, I don't know anybody who successfully smokes a lot of meth. Mm. That's what I mean. We know a, we know some guys who do coke probably too much right. who are still killing it. But I think because there isn't that champion of entrepreneurial meth smoking, mm. we can't really approve of it. The only guy I know who's on methamphetamine or who has done it in the past, though I'm not sure he's clean, is Rat Dick Ralph, right. who has now entered both of our worlds. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Almost banged my wife. 